And you've decided to widen the investigation into other suspicious deaths on UK soil. Do you now expect Russian state involvement in those? In terms of other investigations, there will, there will come a time when I will need to satisfy myself in terms of getting assurances from the police and other investigators about them. Home Secretary Amber Rudd acknowledging that police and intelligence services are looking beyond last week's poisoning to other suspicious deaths. The deaths include those of Boris Berezovsky, an outspoken critic of the Kremlin. The hazardous materials team was called to his home to help figure out the cause of his death. And whistleblower Alexander Parapolichny. At the time, British police ruled out foul play, but now traces of an extremely toxic plant in his stomach. But last June, investigative journalists at BuzzFeed published a series called From Russia with Blood. An investigative report by the BuzzFeed news site last year uncovered 14 gruesome deaths that U.S. spy agencies have linked to Russia. And in light of this week's poisoning, MPs in the British Parliament demanded those suspicious deaths be re-examined, suggesting that nearly a year ago, investigative journalists may have been on to something. Heidi Blake is the UK investigations editor for BuzzFeed News. So these cases had previously been dismissed as not suspicious. What did your investigation find that suggests they are? Well, our investigation pinpointed 14 suspicious deaths in Britain over the past uh, 15 years or so, which we could connect to Russia. Um, there was evidence in all of those cases that those individuals had angered either the Kremlin or powerful individuals within Russia. In many cases, they received death threats before they ultimately died. Um, they believed that their lives were in danger. And many of them died in highly suspicious circumstances. For example, as, as, as you pointed out there, Alexander Peripolichny was found to have a deadly plant poison in his stomach when he died. Another of the individuals on our list uh, was stabbed to death with two knives um, in an incident that police described as a suicide when they shut down the investigation. Um, in all of the cases that we looked at, the police had treated those deaths as non-suspicious, despite the existence of really overwhelming evidence pointing at Russia and suggesting that there was, there was much more that needed to be investigated. And we also established that US spy agencies had, in all 14 cases, gathered intelligence from human intelligence sources and intercept material that suggested that those deaths were likely to be assassinations. And that evidence had been passed to the British government, who had done nothing with it and allowed police to shut down every single investigation uh, without, without looking further into the Russian connection. So why is that when there were so many, I would say, tremendous numbers of red flags and, and the US intelligence agencies as well pointing in this direction? Why weren't police in the UK willing to pursue it? Well, what our sources uh, in both in the British government and intelligence services and also in the US are telling us is that the, the British government has really been loath to take a firm line with the Kremlin under Vladimir Putin. And that's in common with the stance taken by many Western governments who've wanted to reset relations and try to engage the Kremlin positively in order to build business links um, and engage in, you know, in, in, in sort of healthy diplomatic relations. Um, but that's really been an impossible to position to maintain as Russia has taken increasingly um, brazen maneuvers in, in the West, interfering in democracies, conducting assassinations, um, and, you know, carrying out cyber attacks and making increasingly provocative statements. We know the British government has been very concerned about engaging in hostilities with a Kremlin that is prepared to take fairly drastic actions, apparently with no regard for the consequences, that they're concerned about protecting British business interests in Russia and the large amounts of Russian money that flow into British banks and properties um, every year. Um, and so there's, there's not been an appetite to pick a fight with the Kremlin until now. But I think the use of a, a deadly nerve agent um, on the streets of Britain, exposing hundreds of members of the public to this deadly toxin, really is, is seen as a threshold having been crossed. And the government is now waking up to the need to, to stand up to Russia. And, and not to be too glib about this, but a, a tremendous number of Russian nationals who die on UK soil, why are they all going there if they really can't be secure? Well, I think that is a very good question. I think there's a number of reasons why there's a big uh, Russian diaspora in Britain. Partly it's because um, this is a great place to launder money and a really great place to spend it too. Um, you know, London is an international hub for money laundering. Um, we have a huge financial sector here which is set up to help, you know, despots fleeing 
corrupt regimes abroad and their henchmen uh, to come here and to invest their money in British property, um, in the British banking system, in, in British shell companies, which are very easy to set up. Um, and, that, and that's, you know, that, that's been, it's, it's a honeypot for dirty money from around the world. But also, this is a great place to come and be a super, super rich person and to live a fairly glamorous lifestyle in the ritzier parts of London. Um, so I think for all those reasons, this has been a very attractive place. And the British government has actively courted, um, though, you know, that, that sort of inward investment from Russia. We've, we've wanted to encourage it. It's a huge boon to the British economy. So we've been generous about doling out political asylum to Russians who want to come here, allowing them to come and to live here and spend their money without, without asking too many questions. Tremendous work pointing in the direction of all of these cases that are now finally getting the scrutiny they deserve. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me.